Chargers. Touchdown, UCLA. With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. Los Angeles, what is going on? Thank you for tuning in to the LA Football Podcast here on the LA Football Network, LAFBnetwork.com. Excited for today's episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And as always, brought to you by betonline.ag. Plenty of sports and props to wager on. Head to betonline.ag on mobile or desktop. Get a 50% welcome bonus if you have yet to sign up, which is ludicrous if you haven't. But if you have not, sign up today. 50% welcome bonus. That's betonline.ag. Today, though, I'm excited to be joined by my good friend, the co-host of Chargers Unleashed right here on the LA Football Network, Mr. Dan Wolkenstein. What's up, my man? Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Um, dude, I was sitting here listening to your hype intro video and I'm like ready to go. I'm watching all these LA football teams like jacked up and ready. I love the you got the beer clacking, you got Frosty throwing up steam. I'm like, let's go. It's yeah. gonna be good. Appreciate that. You just made a pretty sweet one for your guys' show too, though. Yeah, I don't have as many sweet sound effects and special effects as you do. Yours is pretty pretty up there. I like it. I don't know. I don't know. What I, I mean not too much horn, but I like about ours is you know you see each stadium and it kind of it's almost like it goes through a story, right? Like you're going yeah. through LA story, different teams. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, man. How are you doing? doing? I'm good. I'm uh, you know, it's a, it feels like it's been a long week already. What is it? Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, feels like it's been a long week, but it's a good week. Uh, California's open again as of today. Our state crazy. is open. How crazy is that? I, it's so weird. I it's also hot as. Get out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I just came back from vacation with some friends for a birthday out in Arizona, and it was literally like 121 degrees on my drive home. Oh my and God. I come home, and it's like 100, and it's just as bad. But it feels – it still feels just as hot. But yeah. it's so – like today, it was so weird. We went to happy hour, and like immediately, they're like, oh, you don't have to wear masks. You're fine. It's California. And I just – it just – it was so foreign. I was like, I'm mm. kind of bracing myself. I don't know what to do with my hands. I just <laughs> right. Well, now you have to like, like, make sure you're like giving a good face to someone, like smile, or if you're like frowning and <laughs> making a face, they can see you now. Um, yeah, I, I was at a restaurant too, and it's yeah, it's just a bizarre feeling to be able to walk around. So I've been. I mean, I have my vaccine, and when I'm outside and stuff, and you know, in large areas, like I don't wear it anyway. Just you know, I, I've always been a a common sense user. Like, okay, if I'm like by myself in a park, 300 feet from the nearest person, <laughs> probably don't need to wear a mask. I'm good. But to, being able to now be in like crowds, it just feels weird. It's different. It feels weird. And like, even before, like I'm vaccinated too. And even before it's like, I would wear a mask anyways, just because I think it made a lot more people just like comfortable. Exa- yeah, totally. And like, I was, it wasn't for me as much as it was for people I was around. But like now you just walk around and you just see like everyone without mask. And like, not gonna lie, I get a little nervous because I'm like, I just hope people are being honest and doing the right thing. But yeah. you know, you hope you can, you know, stick to science, stick to facts. Hopefully, people are doing the right thing, and hopefully, we can all get out of this. Get yeah. the football games on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. Exactly, we are yeah. ready. Oh yeah, because yeah, that's the weird thing. It's like it's everything's open, and you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. But it's like, how do they? I mean, you're all just. It's basically just the trust factor thing, which you know we're right. all. Do you really me. trust everyone? I mean. Yeah, no, but, <laughs> no, <laughs> but I think we, I think what this has taught us, though, this whole thing is, I think people are generally, obviously not everyone, but I, I think generally people are more trustworthy now. Or the, for example, back in the day for work, whatever job you do, I, I, if you didn't work at home to begin with, usually if you were sick, unless you were like dying, you went to work, like, especially in the, I worked in the restaurant industry, which is bizarre because you're like handling people's food. But it was like impossible to call out of a restaurant job. Like you, unless you were literally dying, like in a hospital, you worked. I worked with strep throat. I worked with all these crazy sicknesses, the flu. And then nowadays it's like, okay, if I have even like a slight, like scratch my throat, I'm like, okay, come in. And they're like, okay, good. Yeah, stay away. Like, let us know yep. how you feel. So I think that will change things. And 
whether it's COVID or not, I think as a society, we'll be a little healthier. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're getting a little older in age. We wake up with like a little like slight kink in our neck and maybe we have aches. And of course, you immediately think, oh, I have COVID. And then you're done. You don't have to go to work. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. So anyway, very happy things are getting back to normal. Very happy that, you know, sports are, they've been back for a while, but seeing fans here in LA, it's weird. You know, all last year we had fans in KC, fans in Dallas, but nothing here in Los Angeles. And now you being a season ticket holder, um, you know, we are supposed to have a full SoFi rockin', which is just going to be awesome. And I will lead off by saying we're going to get we're going to talk to mini camp and stuff this episode. That's why Dan's on doing a little Chargers Rams mini camp talk. But uh, I was able to attend Rams open practice last week during their mini camp that ended their mini camp at SoFi with 30 to 35,000 fans and. I mean, me and you were there two weeks ago for the tour together, but being there with actual fans, dude, I mean, it is just, it's obviously a breathtaking arena, but actually seeing people in the seats, it just makes it that much better. Like, I can't wait. The one question I am really looking forward to is kind of like the dynamics when it comes to like acoustics. And so I'm curious, like when you, with the people, cause you had quite a bit there compared to when yeah. we were there, could you hear like cheers and kind of stuff? Like, could you hear... So I'm just curious what like the audibility, the audibleness would look like once that place is packed and rocking. I dude, I, so I think it's gonna be loud because it was, like I said, thirty thirty. So basically half full is what it was, and this is a practice. There wasn't even like set plays. You have if anyone's been to training camp, you have like the ones and twos on one side of the field and like the threes and fours on the other side. So there's simultaneous plays going on. But you know, two two outwell makes a great catch over the middle and like it was loud like people cheering clapping like you could hear it and that and it wasn't even like a unified cheer because everyone's looking at a different thing so i think honestly the fact that it's somewhat of a dome Mm -hmm. and then also the way they built it like when they were explaining on our tour how it's built straight up not out so everyone's kind of on top of you Uh, it just echoes i think it's going to be loud and even though as you can see if you're watching on youtube our background you can see the glass panels and they can actually take some of those out so you get airflow but there's still enough that the, um, I can't, what's, it's not a bonics. What's the word of, uh, like sound, whatever the word for sound is, but the, the sound bounces off and kind of goes around. So I think it's gonna be loud. I don't know if it's gonna be the loudest stadium in the NFL, but I think it's going to be up there. It, I will say for folks who have not gone to SoFi, whether it's the tour, whether it's checking out the gift shops or just going and looking at it, like, Chargers fans, Rams fans, any sports fan in LA, we have the best stadium in the country. Like it's not even close. In the world, you have man. to check it out. I mean, it's unreal. It feels fake. Every time I'm inside, take a picture, it looks like a green screen. It, it's that unreal. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And it, I mean, we always say the pictures don't do it justice, but even when you're there, it's like, is this like, am I actually standing and like, it just does not seem. No. Really, I, there, there aren't many stadiums that I have been to that I had that like jaw hit the floor moment. Like I had it in Fenway in Boston. Mm-hmm. Just because the historical factor, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like Wrigley Field, I can understand. Mm-hmm. Like if you go to like TD Garden, you know, you go to New York City, you, you know, you're yeah. Madison Square. But like you walk into this place, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah. It's even like even like Dodger stadium has a lot of history in Chavez ravine, but as terms of just like, obviously the views are beautiful there. The end of the LA, the Chavez, but as terms of just stadiums, like, I don't want to get flack on this, this is LA, but in terms of stadiums, it's, stadiums right. nothing really special. it's just, it's just got the history, but you don't walk in and you're like, this is gorgeous. So far you, yeah, you definitely think that. Yep. It's yeah. Right, so. Let's talk some football, enough of stadiums and floofy things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's talk about the guys actually playing in this stadium. Uh, mini camp Rams had their mandatory mini camp last week. Wrap that up, like I said, at SoFi for an open practice. Chargers began theirs this week. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about it. I mean, there's only so much you can really get into with mini camp. But let's let's just kick it off with this, Dan, and uh, let's talk about who will leave or who left, I guess, for the Rams, but who will leave for the Chargers a lasting impression during this mini camp. And this segment is brought to you by our friends at manscaped Uh great product for men's grooming. Both us use it. We won't get into too much detail, but have you tested out the new lawnmower 4.0, my man? 
I have, I have, and it does leave a good first and last impression. I'll leave it there. Uh, all <laughs> kinds of things you can do with it. Uh, again, you guys can go to manscaped.com, save 20%, use the code LAFB20, and hook it up for your friends, yourself, your loved ones. Uh, awesome products. They got all kinds of stuff, not just trimmers. They've got stuff for your nose. They've got stuff for uh, the mats. They've got bags, boxers, shirts, you name it. They got it all chafing lotions anything you need to uh be more comfortable uh yeah code lafb20 or you could use the code chargers unleashed both will get you the same 20 percent off both will get you free shipping both help out the la football network so you can't go wrong with that so once again that's manscape.com promo code lafb20 or chargers unleashed get yourself 20 percent off for one of the best men's product out there any ladies out there listening father's day is right around the corner this is a pretty good gift for Father's Day. Uh, but you better order that like ASAP because, uh, but you're free shipping. So at least that's good. But get it going. So anyway, lasting impression. I'll let you go first and I'll, I'll then I can backtrack to the Rams. But mini camp, again, it's guys are in shorts. You're wearing a helmet. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do, but there's still some impressions you can leave, whether it's with the coaching staff, whether it's fans. Who is a player that you think uh, will leave a lasting impression for your Chargers? I think the easy answer is something is someone like like Justin Herbert or someone like Derwin James, where like their impact is felt immediately, and probably more so Derwin James, just because he wasn't there last year, and everyone is just chomping at the bit to see him. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, I think it's going to be someone like a Corey Lindsley, like someone who could just help shore up the confidence of the offensive line, shore up all the communications. We all know Justin Herbert is going to look great without pads. He looks great with pads, but we know this is his time to shine, especially. But yeah. to be able to see the offensive line improve and kind of come together with Matt Filer, with uh, Brian Bulaga, I mean, Ode Boucher, I mean, there's all kinds of people. But I think Corey Lindsley is like the glue for that offense. And so if I had to pick two players, I probably would pick either Corey Lindsley on offense and then Derwin James on defense and maybe kind of a 2B would be someone like a Drew Tranquil. We, we mm. missed him dearly last year, and he brings a whole new element of athleticism and just dedication to that linebacking core that before Kenneth Murray wasn't doing as much as he could because he wasn't comfortable in the scheme. Yeah. Now you put him with Kenneth Murray and Drew Tr- I mean, watch out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, I, so I was going to mention someone who I thought, and Drew Tranquil was going to be who I was going to mention. Uh, you guys had him on your show on Charters Unleashed just uh, last week, I believe. Such awesome interview. Guy. Yeah, make sure to check that out. Um, interview with Drew Tranquil. But yeah, him coming back from injury, he's talked about already in his post, uh, not post-game conference, but you know, press conference after practice today about just how good this scheme is and putting these players in position to succeed. And even had a little... A little jab for Gus Bradley in last year's system about, you know, really not putting in you in position to succeed. And uh, I think they're going to be, uh, I think players, players recognize that. I mean, these guys aren't dumb. They're smart guys. They, you know, they have to study all these crazy playbooks and they know when your coach is leaving you out to dry. And uh, I think it was, I, re- I, you never see, want to see guys be disrespectful, which he was not at no, all. No. But I do like it when players kind of say, yeah, this guy was not helping us. And now we're in a system that I think will help us. I I think what's more telling is I like it when players are transparent and authentic. There you go. And and you and you can you can be respectful but also be honest. I mean, he yes. wasn't sitting there saying, you know, Gus left me out to dry. He was just saying it kind of sucks having to cover, you know, the fastest player in the NFL as a linebacker. Like it just doesn't <laughs> yeah. work. It just doesn't make um, sense. No. No. So He's it's going to be a good thing to watch. And, and one of the things that's maybe helped transition over to the Ram side. Um, one of the things that Drew Tranquil mentioned, and I was going to ask you about this um, specifically for the defense and talk about a playmaker. He was saying one of the differences that he found of this team so far, just in the practices and mini camps is how multiple that the defense can be. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it a bunch in our episode, but you have experience with a multiple defensive front defensive alignment with Brandon Staley because he was on your team for a while. Yeah. What was that like just seeing all the multiple coverages, multiple schemes, a lot of like the, you had a lot of, you know, things behind the curtains that weren't really showed at first sight. What is, what do you you think he meant by just the term, you know, being multiple? That's something he was excited about. Well, I I think um, one is it just, 
I mean, obviously you mentioned the fronts. There's just so many different fronts that offenses, the defense was always ahead of the offense. And usually it's kind of the other way around. Defense is kind of playing catch up. Good defense, good defenses have, you know, obviously great players, but they also have schemes that shut down offenses and they stay on, on, on the offensive, if you will. Mm-hmm. And so if you watch the Rams a lot last year, a lot of times they started off slow on defense. Like I, I don't know the exact numbers, but the opposing team scored on the first drive fairly often, or they scored early in the first quarter fairly often. And then they maybe carried that momentum into the second quarter. But w- once you went into halftime and then they said, okay, so this is what the offense is giving us. These are the fronts. We're going to switch up change. We're going to move guys around. We're going to make, you know, Jalen Ramsey was a star. Now we're making the money. We're going to do this different things. They came out in that second half and they were lights out all season long, except for that green Bay game, which you know, unfortunately left a sour taste in people's mouth. But other than that, I mean, one specifically, I think a lot of is the Buffalo game with Josh Allen, who was just lighting them up in the first half. And then they come back in the second half and completely shut him down, shut that offense down. The Rams ultimately should have won that game and ended up losing. But I think that's what Tranquil is meaning when he's just saying multiple is just, they have so many different ways to come at you to be offensive on defense. And, they switch it up throughout the game a lot. And it's not like you have a game plan going into it and you stick to that. No, you have a, a script in the beginning. And then that script gets ripped up, changed multiple times over and over and over again. And I think that's what makes them so dangerous. And I think that's what makes this defense has a lot of talented players. And now they have the right coach to kind of man the ship. And I'm drew tranquil specifically. I'm so excited to see in this front. Totally. I I think you're right. And it's going to be, it's going to be very refreshing for Chargers fans, especially because like that first half, second half adjustments thing, like it was the complete opposite for the last few years. Polar opposite. Yeah. Like we, we, the Chargers did not make adjustments. Like yeah. it was like, this is what we got. We're going to go up against. We think we can beat you with what we have. And there was no adaptability. There was no change. Um, and a lot of times players were left out to dry. And some of that is a fault of the coaches. Some of that are the players, but as a coach, you have to know how to put your players in the best position to succeed and rely on their strengths. And I think that's what Brandon Staley and Ronaldo Hill and his defense are going to feast off of. And it'll be so funny just to see, like, Chargers fans are so used to the opposite of it. And so it's going to take a little time for everyone to kind of get used to, like, that impression of, oh, like, they're doing something different. I don't know what they're running right now. They're not running cover two. This is weird. Yeah, what is this? We got, we got three safeties on the field? What's going yeah. on right now? Who is that? Yeah, I, I cannot wait for that first Chargers-Raiders game. And when the Raiders jump out to an early lead and Gus Bradley's defense holds Justin Herbert's offense early in the se- in the first half, and then all of a sudden it just flips the second half, Chargers end up winning by like 20 points, and you know the Raiders' defense can't stop anyone, and we'll be like, yeah, we, we, we recognize that. That looks familiar. Yeah, and then we'll and then we'll we'll pay attention to this episode on June fifteenth and say we told you so. <laughs> yeah, hope you were listening. Um, but yeah, last play I want to mention real quick about the Chargers before going over the Rams, uh, and I've talked about him a lot, but Chris Harris Jr., who uh, I just think is going to be a bounce back player this year. I think it's going to be really dominant in this defense. Um, obviously, has you know a relationship with Staley and Ronaldo Hill, so knows what they want to do very well. And uh, he said in his his presser today about how him and Derwin both don't really have positions, quote unquote. They're basically going to be guys that are just going to be used all over the field. And I'm not sitting here trying to pat my back, but I've been saying all along, you know, the way Staley does things is Chris Harris is not going to be just a slot corner. That's where he's best at. That's not what he's going to be. Derwin James is not just going to be a a box safety or a deep safety. They're going to use these guys so interchangeably. And that's why, you know, guys like Mark Webb, who is a seventh round pick is going to get on the field a lot. That's why Asante Samuel Jr. may have reps at safety as well as obviously mostly on the outside, but it's hearing actually a player, like you said, transparency, hearing Chris Harris say that, yeah, I don't even have a position. We're just, we're DBs that we just get used all over in the best position to succeed. Exciting. And he's going to leave a lot of impression from this mini camp, I think. Music to my ears. And I think it's going to be like, it's cool to hear the players and you start to pick up themes of like leadership and like the idea of being quarterbacks on the defense. And like, it's starting to sound like the quarterbacks of this defense are going to be like Joey Bosa are going to be Drew Tranquil are going to be Chris Harris and Derwin James. Like yeah. that's the quarterback group. And yep. like you mentioned it, like they are just going to be DBs. I think Chris Harris and Drew and Derwin James, I think each practice at three positions today. Mm-hmm. So I think 
you hear Brandon Staley talk about it early on where like you just have edge rushers, you have the inside guys, and then you have your DBs. Yeah. Like that's, and it's so hard for fans and for analysts and just beat writers to like consistently remember that because that's so not the norm Yeah, in the NFL. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome just to see something refreshing, something innovative. And yeah. you heard everyone talk about like that too, Brandon Staley is, and that's why they got him. But it's a whole different ball game when you actually start seeing some of the things that he mentioned in his first presser yeah. now come to light. It just, it just it's just night and day. And I know, you, yeah. And you and you coming from the Rams. I mean, you already had McVay and you had Brandon Staley. That you know full well not to take that for granted. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, and we'll, we'll get to actually that later on in the show. So that's funny you mentioned that. But um, okay, let's switch the Rams a little bit, and I'll talk about who left a lasting impression and Rams fans out there that had been paying attention. This won't be a surprise to you, but um, Jacob Harris tight end out of UCF has just had a stellar uh, mini camp. You know, he's been uh, you know, high point in the ball. He's been a great route runner. Uh, I watched him at open practice. You know, he's got phenomenal footwork for a big guy. I mean, the, the dude is like six, five, six, six, uh, more slender, not super big build, but still like, you know, a, a strong guy, but he, he has footwork. Like he's two, two out. Well, like, he's, you know, five, <laughs> seven, five, eight. So, uh, doing those cone drills and just, you know, running, you can, you, you can watch guys. It's right about doing practice is you have your tight end group because you ran with the tight ends and, you know, I, I won't even say their names cause I don't want to sound like I'm trying to insult them. But you see some guys doing, you know, their, their cone drills, doing their footwork. And then you see him and it's just like, it's like light speed. It's just like totally different. And that's where you kind of see these stars. And again, it's mini camp, but that's where you kind of see these little skill sets where you're like, okay, this guy has something. Now, if they can just utilize it correctly, if, uh, you know, he's in the correct, you know, installs on offense and, and really keeps his, his head focused and, and, and learns the playbook well and gets after it. He obviously has the intangibles and the tools you can't coach. Um, so yeah, Jacob Harris had a phenomenal mini camp, but, a lot of players have phenomenal mini camps and never translates to Sundays. So that's what we'll want to see now in the training camp. But uh, definitely a lot of excitement around this kid. I know Rams Nation is super pumped about it. And that's really important too, because you guys had a good quality tight end leave on free agency. So you needed someone to kind of come in and take that spot. I mean, Gerald Everett was a guy that I was actually kind of interested in the Chargers potentially getting if mm-hmm. potentially under Henry left. And the fact that you guys were able to get one that's already standing out, I mean, that's a it's a big get, especially for that offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gerald Everett was a guy that, you know, I always I always was a big fan of. It was like every year on the show, I was like, all right, this is the this is the Gerald Everett breakout year. And not that he was ever bad, he just never like broke out. Like I feel like every year he was around that four hundred to five hundred yards, which isn't terrible for a tight end too. Um, he'd have some games where he'd blow up for like, you know, one fifty and a touchdown, and some games where he'd have like two catches for fifteen yards. But I was just waiting for that, like, cause I remember Dan, um, his first, his rookie year, I was at training camp in Irvine and it's kind of like what I was saying with Jacob Harris. I, I was watching him run routes over the middle and sometimes you just see things. We're like, dude, this guy's an athlete. Like he was just bigger, stronger, and faster than everyone in that secondary. than all those linebackers, I was like, this is going to be the next great tight end. And they got him out of like South Alabama, like some guy we've never heard of. And it just <laughs> never quite matriculated. And I hope it, no disrespect to him, because I, you know, I, as a person, like I wish him all the best, but I hope it doesn't now all of a sudden happen in Seattle against, <laughs> against our Rams. And all of a sudden he just becomes this like dominant tight end in the NFC West. Like they're, they're number two receiver behind DK Metcalf or something. But yeah, for, for the, for the Rams sake, you hope it doesn't happen, but for his sake, yeah. you wish yeah. him well. <laughs> I'm never going to root against a person, but yeah, nope. it'd be unfortunate if now is his breakout year right after he leaves. But, um, yeah, I, th- that was the easy one, Jacob Harris. I think, obviously, you know, Matthew Stafford left the lasting impression, not necessarily on his play because we knew what he was going to do, but just I think him as a leader and being able to be at the forefront, uh, you know, at open practice, watching him be the last guy in the field, signing autographs. Uh, well, it was cool. a super cool thing to see. Uh, and he was out there for a while. Like, there was a, at some point where the, I don't know if it's a PR person or social media or communications, but it was like, like, dude, you, we got to go. Like, let's get off the field. Let's <laughs> wrap it up. It. Yeah. And it's funny because SoFi, well, you remember. So, you know, on the sidelines, there's like the the um, field level suites. And then there's like a, there's a field level suites. 
And then the first row is actually like 10 feet up, but it's not like directly underneath you. So he was like, kind of, I don't know how to do this. on like out, kind of yeah. out over here. And then fans are like draping over here, just like tossing things. I was, I was wondering how they got it to him. Were they throwing it? They were just literally throwing. And I'm over here dying laughing. Cause you know, he'd be like, he'd see a guy or a kid like, yeah, toss it, toss him his helmet. And you see three people just like throw their stuff. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what if he just walks away? You're never getting that back again, that like jersey or helmet or, but they, they were super cool. And even oh, when he funny. left, there were some people that had thrown, there was probably like 15 things still that he hadn't signed in. They're like, you got to go. And then there was some like one that came though and like tossed it all back up. So at least, oh, cool. Like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think there's just, you know, so much excitement. You know, McVeigh said during the media event that I was at beforehand how he's just so excited. Uh, this off season, of course, everyone took that out of context and started saying, oh, he wasn't excited with Jared Goff. And now he's with Matt Stafford. It's like, well, you know, you can be excited about a new quarterback, a new fresh toy. It doesn't mean you weren't excited about your old one. Um, and, if you're, he, and if you gave him some truth serum, he's much more excited about Matthew Stafford. Oh, for sure. But I, <laughs> yeah, I always just get annoyed when as soon as he said it, because it was just a nonchalant moment. He was up there on stage, him, Matthew and um, uh, Kevin. He does like entertainment tonight. I forgot his last name, but Kevin was doing the interview with him. And uh, he's like, Sean, you, you basically like you look, you know, you just look super happy. Like how's this off season going? You got it. Of course, everyone cuts this out. The quote, like you got fans back in here. And Sean's like, oh yeah, we're just so excited. Like I, I can't remember being like this excited during an off season. I just love this team. And obviously this guy sitting next to me, blah, blah. And as soon as like he said it, you could just, I'm sitting there around everyone like, starts sweeting media people and everyone immediately like, Oh, Sean's super excited about his new quarterback, blah, blah, blah. And, and then he had to literally come out after practice, like without even taking a question, he was like, I got to address this first. I was not doing anything to throw shade at Jared. Jared was great for this organization. I'm just excited about this new group, this team having fans, all this. I'm like, he's like, just let me be excited about my team. I'm like, it's, geez. Yeah. There's the, there's the media for you. Yeah. So, Speaking of coaches, let's move on to our next topic, and that is the Brewery X Factor. Bigger shoes to fill, Raheem Morris or Joe Staley. But first, got to mention Brewery X, who is the sponsor of this segment. Dan, I know you're a beer guy. You've had some Brewery X. What's, uh, what's the favorite beer you've had so far? They've got 30, but from what you've had. I would say either Dictionary Roulette which okay, that one honestly, IPA, right? that, that, that was my favorite. That's the IPA. Um, and then I will say Slap and Tickle is growing on me. Yeah. Those are my two. What about you? I haven't, I actually haven't had their seltzers yet. And I've heard that those are actually very good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Slap and Tickle is great. It's probably one of their most popular beers overall. At least that's what the guys at Brewery X tell me. Um, but it, it's very good for an IPA. I'm not a huge IPA fan and I do enjoy it. So I think that tells you how good it is. Um, I love their Pilsner. Um, I'm more of a light beer guy. Um, they have a really good Pilsner. It's fantastic. Uh, they have an SOK um, Mexican lager. It's also very good. It's a hoppier Mexican lager, I would say, than like a, you know, like a Modelo or a Corona or a Soul or Pacifico. And it, it has a more Americanized approach, but it still has that, that smooth, limey flavor. So that's, I think that's super good. One of my favorites. Um, but I haven't had anything that I dislike. The seltzers are all good. I've mentioned on the show before, Jungle Juice. If you want to just relieve your college days and you know have a nice hangover the next day, pick up a, a sixer of Jungle Juice. It'll bring you right back. There you go. And I know you said Raheem Morris. Did we, did we mean Joe Lombardi? The, yes. Oh, did I, oh, I'm saying Joe Staley. I combined the two. I do mean I do mean Raheem Morris. Um, I knew that much. So I don't know if you I, wanted. I didn't know if you wanted to just keep this as live TV and just say screw it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll just keep it rolling. That's Let's how we do. do. It. Okay. Um, yeah, Brewery X, make sure to check them out. They're on the La Palma Beer Trail in Anaheim, California, right by Angel Stadium and Honda Center. Uh, they are got great food as well. Open, they got takeout, curbside service. Oh, they have food. I didn't know that. Cool. Phenomenal food. Their pizza, out of this world. Their burgers, fantastic. Okay. That's all. Next time in Anaheim, I'm going there. You heard it here first. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we're going to be doing some broadcasting there once the season out. The state of California is back open, so super pumped about what That's, we're doing. Just the idea of doing that. It's like yeah. we waited a year and a half mm-hmm. for this. I mean, I don't think people are ready for what LEFB is coming out with this next eight yeah. months. It's going to be wild. We're going to be sitting at Brewery X in this beautiful brewery, sipping beers, broadcasting live with people hanging out, enjoying themselves, playing lawn games, eating good food, drinking beer. Thank you, Brewery X. Let's go. 
last June, a year from now, that or a year ago, that would not have seemed possible. So this is great. No, this no. But yeah, there. Brewery X, honestly, I had not heard of them until we got them as a sponsor and I got to try a few of them. I thought they were great. So highly, highly recommend. I drink them personally. I have an entire fridge stocked full of them. Thank yeah. you, Brewery X. And yeah. thank you <laughs> to Ryan as well. Um, highly recommend Brewery X. Check them out. Yeah, they're, uh, you can find them at Trader Joe's, BevMo, Total Wine, or like I said, just go to Brewery X in Anaheim, or just hit one of us up, and we'll hook you up. I mean, we, we got we got the hookups, so don't we be shy. <laughs> don't be shy. Hit up uh, at Chargers Homer on Twitter. Just bug the crap out of him, or hit up Ryan Daredell if you on Twitter, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, all right, so Raheem Morris or Joe Lombardi. I don't know who Joe Staley is. <laughs> Whoever you are, shout out to you. There's your free you know, couple minutes of fame while you were on the screen. Uh, I guess I was just combining Lombardi and Brandon Staley, but so Raheem Morris, who is the new defensive coordinator. So let me, I guess, preface this. So everyone knows what we're talking about. Raheem Morris, new defensive coordinator for the Rams. He's got really big shoes to fill. Obviously Brandon Staley leaving. And then Joe Lombardi, new offensive coordinator for the chargers. Now, a lot of people will be like, well, we all hated Anthony Lynn and Shane Steichen. And yeah, we may have liked Pep Hamilton, but I think more so the shoes to fill are the fact that yes, as whatever you thought of those three guys, they did nurture the rookie of the year. And so now Lombardi needs to come in and not screw that up, essentially. So let me ask you, Dan, bigger shoes to fill Raheem Morris or Joe Lombardi. It's tougher, actually, than it once you break it down and think about it like that. It's a little tougher yeah, than on the surface. It's tougher than you think. And I'll come out, I'll come out of the gate. I think it's Raheem Morris. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's closer than people think because, like you mentioned, for all the flack that the Chargers coaching staff got last year, they had the best rookie quarterback in NFL history, yep. balling it out with no training camp. Pep Hamilton was amazing at a quarterback's coach, like unreal. And yep. the Chargers offense was actually pretty darn good considering they had no rushing game. So yeah. like as much as people want to kind of throw him under the bus a little bit, like he wasn't bad. So, But Joe Lombardi has a big shoe to fill in terms of, like you said, don't screw it up. Now you have a lot more keys. Your offensive line is actually fixed. You got these guys back healthy. Like, you got to go. Now, that being said, the best defensive coordinator in the NFL has since left your team. And now you have to fill those shoes. And, like, that, he, he was a very innovative, progressive thinker. It wasn't just like he's, you know, some Ravens defensive coordinator who's just been good for a while. Like he's, <laughs> yeah. he's like on the cutting edge. And so I, I think it has to be Raheem Morris because I don't see him doing any better than the best defense in the league. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the answer is Raheem Morris and it is closer. I'll, I'll mention too in a second, it is closer than it seems from that. But when you lose, I mean, you, you said it, but when you lose not only the coordinator that led your defense to be the number one defense in the NFL, it was a a more historic defense than they got credit for. I mean, they were up there with the 2015 Broncos who were considered are considered one of the best ever. And the Rams defense was, statistic-wise, neck and neck with them. And that, was, and that was a team that absolutely throttled Cam Newton in the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Same team. Throttled them. You know, they, they went on a historic run. Um and the Rams defense last year was right with them on par with sacks, with points allowed, with yards per game. Like it was literally mirror image. And I'm kind of surprised they didn't get as, I mean, I know they got credit, but I feel like they should have gotten a little more maybe just because they ended up losing in the divisional round. But um, when you lose that and you lose some other coaches, you lose some other players on that defense, and then you bring in a guy that the expectations are still going to be Super Bowl or bust. Number one defense. You still have Donald Steele, Ramsey, no excuses. There's just some big shoes to fill. And I think Raheem Morris is going to live up to it to a sense. I don't think necessarily they'll be as good as they were last year on defense, but I think he is good enough and he's well-versed enough. And from what I've heard and spoken to players and coaches so far, everyone loves him, loves his mentality, loves his energy. It's very different than Staley in a sense. Similar because they're both players coaches, but different that Staley was more of a, you know, here's this, you know, it's very like football sense, loves talking to his players, but Raheem Morris is more of like a rah, rah, like in your face, like, you know, getting guys fired up kind of thing. Interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the answer. It, it, it's going to be such hard shoes to fill. 
Um, in terms of Lombardi, before I throw it back to you, um, yeah, I, I just think I think not enough people gave the Lynn Steichen Hamilton trio enough credit for Justin Herbert. I know everyone just hated it then because of the clock management, hated him because of you know specific game plan and this. Rightly so. Rightly, Rightly so. so. And you're you know you're everyone's entitled to their opinion. What and I don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole, but I talk about this a lot. In my opinion, Lynn's biggest mistake was just hanging on to Gus Bradley. Like if he would have fired Gus Bradley week three or four, they could have potentially been a nine or 10 win team and made the playoffs. Cause they went seven and nine still with how abysmal they were in the beginning of the year. And it was, yeah, I, I agree. I just, and, it was, there was a, I mean, there was, it was a perfect storm of epic proportions across the board. But yeah. I think one of the, one of the faults of Anthony Lynn's was, you know, and this is one of those things that you hear sometimes on an interview where it's like really not a bad thing, but you're trying to come up with something that's bad about yourself. But like yeah. in Lynn's case, like he was loyal to a fault. Yeah. And like he's a, he's a great person. No one will say anything negatively about him as a man. Yep. But in terms of him holding on to his guys, it just went too far. Yeah. And it, it went across special teams, offense, defense. I mean, you name it, strength and conditioning, everyone. Yeah. Um, I think the leash was too long for everyone. There wasn't enough accountability, but to be um, honest, there, wasn't, like, there wasn't enough accountability with him either. So yeah, that's where it goes. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, you know, obviously hindsight and where we are today, I think at right now at this junction, fans are probably actually happier that happened. Cause now they have Brandon Staley and this new coaching staff and had it not, we would still be Lynn and I don't know how fans would love that. So now I will um, say, we'll say funny story. We were the, so the Chargers were, we'll see seven, nine, they were three and nine. And uh, yeah. me playing Nostradamus a while back was saying, Oh, Chargers are going to go on a four game winning streak. They're going to end it out seven to nine. Long time. I remember this. My, and my co-host Jake Hefner was, livid and he was so angry because he did not want there to be any slight chance that the chargers keep anthony lynn and when the chargers go in round four straight like that last sunday jake was in a mood because he was sitting there he was literally just like bracing for anthony lynn coming back and was like well that's look what you did look what you did dan all the chargers nation is gonna be pissed off at you but luckily we still got a new coach yeah, I I thought he was gonna be retained. I'll be honest. After that four win streak, I thought, yeah, he'll be back. But I think I think the right decision was made. And and just to mention Sean McVay, what made what makes him a great coach, and what is tough to do as a coach and a leader is he is a guy that moves on. I mean, he moved on from Wade Phillips, who's probably a Hall of Famer. After two three years, he brought him in to basically say, hey, I need someone with your um like uh, your experience to help tutor me to be a head coach. And they basically said, okay, now you're not good enough anymore. Let's Thank move you. On and find someone else. And as ruthless as it can be, obviously it worked out. Got him Brendan Staley and they, they, you know, went farther And now. We'll see how it does with Raheem Morris. So um, always got to give credit to that. So, but yeah, I think we both agree. Both are actually closer than it seems, but Raheem Morris has the, the bigger shoes to fill. So, Let's move on to topic number three. This should be a fun one because we can go a number of different directions with this. Uh, the perfect pairing brought to you by our friends at Garrison Brothers. Dan, real quick, talk to me about Garrison Brothers. I know you've, you've tried it now. You had, the, you had the honeydew, correct? Yes. Yep. How did you um, enjoy it? So Garrison Brothers uh, Distillery out of Texas, they are phenomenal. And it's actually funny. I was out in Texas visiting family. And we were out in Fredericksburg and I came back and my brother-in-law was like, oh my gosh, like I love Garrison Brothers. Did you have a chance to go visit them when you're in Texas? And I was like, little did I know, it was like 20 minutes from where I was. So I didn't actually get to go visit them. Of but course. Garrison Brothers stuff is legit. Uh, it tastes much more expensive than it actually is. Um, yeah. It is not cheap, but it is also not nearly as expensive as, in my opinion, I think it could be. Yeah. Um, awesome stuff. They got small batch. They've got different... Uh, things they've done with California flavorings. They have a honeydew. Um, I think they have a few, like, didn't they have like an ice cream flavor one or something? They did a promotion with the California ice cream company. Uh, I don't know if there's, they still did it, but basically it was a, a Garrison Brothers flavored ice cream is what it was when, oh. they, when they partnered with them, which would have been fantastic. Just throw some whiskey on top of that. Come on now. A whiskey float. We're good. <laughs> I would see a whiskey float sounds so good to me. 
it sounds good, but I love whiskey so much that I'm like, man, I feel like that would just kind of ruin the whiskey. Just pouring a $80 bottle over some cheap <laughs> Briars vanilla ice cream. Ben and Jerry's though. You can make it a little fancy. There you go. Okay. Yeah. If I want to be bougie. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, You'll go from bougie to ratchet real quick. <laughs> real quick. Which is okay. It's okay. It's a, it's, it's a Friday night in a diary household, but um, yeah, Garrison brothers. Great. Make sure to check them out. You can get them anywhere. Uh, really liquors sold here. Total wine, Bevno, uh, a lot of grocery stores, uh, have them not all just because they are more of a, a small batch. Um, but you can find them some places, but I would say recommend more. So Bevmo or total wine, or just go to the link in our description, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening anywhere, you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, tune in anywhere, all those places. Uh, there'll be a link right there. You can click on and order your Garrison brothers. So the perfect pairing. Okay. Well, let me ask you this because we're on the topic. What's your perfect pairing with whiskey? It's probably not ice cream. Ooh, it's not ice cream. Although now it's really making me want to go with ice cream. <laughs> I know. I want to try it. <laughs> I've had like beer floats. I've never actually had a whiskey float. I have not either. And I kind of want to try it. Maybe we have to have that whenever we are doing uh, one of our tailgating things I think, uh, in the go. season. Um, I oh, mean, I, yeah. That'll be one of our like shots or something. Oh, now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Put a little like little vanilla in there. You'd be yeah. Straight. Oof. Um, I'm going to go. I mean, I think it has to be Coke. Like, I, I think I just whiskey Coke, I think is kind of one of my favorites. Um, yeah. although like I, I don't mix it, mix it that much. So, but mm. if I do, it probably would be Coke, but I do know that there are several perfect pairings that folks yeah. go with for whiskey. And sometimes it's just whiskey rocks. <laughs> well, I was going to say my perfect pairing, uh, it's already melted. My perfect pairing is just a nice big ice cube. So you no, know, just a little Garrison brothers right here in this Rams cup. With my nice big rock, that's my. There you go. Pairing. But uh, uh, soda is not bad because it just you know it, it doesn't add any sweetness to it. But just kind of for those that can't handle the harshness, I, I don't prefer that. But you know, ginger ale is good also. I was gonna say um, ginger ale also. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can't go right. My wife, uh, we were in Ireland a few years ago, and obviously you're in Ireland, all you're gonna drink is either Guinness or Jameson. And she's not a huge whiskey fan, but she like fell in love with Jameson and ginger ale's. But then now really? we're back in the states, never gets it. I don't know if it's just because we were there or what. When in Rome. Like, she's like, it tastes different. I'm like, well, I'll, yeah, we were okay. at the store, so I get it. <laughs> okay, last thing. I love getting off topic, as people that listen to the show know. I don't know if you knew this, but in Ireland, so out here, you order a whatever. You order a Jameson ginger ale. You get the you know the bucket glass, pour the Jameson, and they give you, you know they just pour the jam- uh, ginger ale right in, right? So in Ireland, you order a Jameson and ginger ale. They give you a, whether it be a shot or in a rocks glass of Jameson, which is like, I think it was like four euros over there. And then they give you a little small bottle of ginger ale, which is another one euro. So you got to pay extra for the ginger ale, which is weird. Over here, any mixer in the States is free. Over there, a mixer is an add-on. Um, so then you get all these little tiny bottles of ginger ale that you can add in. So I, I just thought that was, I always just drink it, you know, straight, but. It's basically the same thing you get when you're on an airplane. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, essentially. But but even on the airplane, it's still free to add the ginger ale. I thought it was interesting that they charge you That's for it. That's true. That's true. But. Yeah, there's um the good news about being in LA is there are plenty of spots to get good, perfect pairings when it comes to liquor, food. But on both the Rams and the Chargers, yes, um, this is a topic that can go so many different directions depending on what you foresee as the perfect pairing for. Yes. So. I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to go like do an offense and defense? Do you want to just pick a few from the Rams? What are you feeling? Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to just hear your, your creative mind. Cause even before when we were talking, before we jumped on, you're like, we could go this so many different directions. Um, and I, I'm, my wheels are turning too. who's like, I, I, I can think of like the pairing that I would want to like hang out with for lunch and have a drink. Ooh. I'm thinking like the pairing I want to see on the field together. Obviously I'm thinking, the pairing that I want to like, you know, listen to a certain type of music with. I don't know. I want to, where are you going with this? Give okay. me your first pairing. Go, go whatever direction you want. All right. So my first Who's pairing, I, I first pairing, I think I speak for all of Chargers Nation. I'm probably speaking for Daniel Jeremiah. I'm speaking for all the fans. <laughs> I'm speaking for probably every player on that team. Derwin James and Nazir Adderley were meant to play football together. Yep. When Nazir Adderley was drafted, Daniel Jeremiah immediately said that is the perfect pair mm-hmm. to go alongside Derwin James. 
Now, since then, Nazir Adderley was banged up the first year. Derwin James baked up the second year. They have not played on the same field yeah. at all. I actually don't think Derwin James, Joey Bosa, and Nazir Adderley have ever played on the same field together, all three. Yeah, um, I don't think you're wrong. Which is so disheartening, or at least not healthy. Um, those two play styles of Derwin James and Nazir Adderley, Nazir Adderley we actually just had on our show, uh, I think it was last week, uh, yeah. another great interview. If you haven't had a chance, check it out. Um, their play style is so complementary to one another. I think Nazir Adderley has learned a lot these last couple of years. He finally gets an off season this year, but I think that is what folks are so excited to finally see. There's a couple, you know, cross fingers that Nazir Adderley can kind of step up and be what everyone hopes he should be, mm-hmm. but give him or give Brandon Staley, someone like that, give Ronaldo Hill, someone like that alongside Derwin James and Chris Harris and Mike Davis and Asante Samuel Jr. Like that back end is filthy when you think of just potential. Yeah. And so I think the perfect pairing, I hope, is absolutely delicious on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. I think it has to be Derwin James and Nizir Adderley, at least on the field. If it's hel- if they're healthy, that is the perfect pairing. Because, yeah, we've been waiting for it now for what is this going on? Is this the fourth year or third year? This um, is the third year of Nizir Adderley. Yeah, third year. So we've been waiting for it. I agree with you when the pick came in. I was just ecstatic. I remember Adderley was picked. The very next pick, Taylor Rapp went to the Rams. Like It's ironic how close, how symbiotic these teams are. It's crazy. Um, and, yeah, he, he was the perfect pit, the perfect combination. So uh, hopefully we actually see it in full force for 17 games plus some, because I do think this is a playoff team. Um, and hopefully that does happen. For me, for the Chargers, um, you know, there's a lot. If we're going, if we're sticking to the field, I'm going to go with Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray because I just think seeing That's them play one. together, uh, you know, it's an easy one, but different, di- again, different skill sets. Kenneth Murray, I think, will be so much better with a healthy Drew Tranquil. And I think Drew Tranquil will be so much better with a Kenneth Murray. It sounds dumb to say, but it's it's true. And you see linebacking cores that don't always aren't symbiotic, don't always work together. Whereas I think this Chargers unit. Uh, especially with these two guys uh, will be one of the top linebacking units, especially in this Staley system, how they want to do things. And uh, it'll be really fun to watch them too, just, you know, running all over the place, not having to cover Tyreek Hill, um, but, but still being able to get in the backfield, rushing the quarterback. We'll see Kenneth Murray probably get three, four, five, maybe even six sacks, which is insane because that's not at all what he did last year, but he has the skill set to do that. That's what he, and that's then, what he did in college. Like that's yeah, what exactly. he should have been doing last year. Yeah. He was like a true Sam linebacker at Oklahoma state or at Oklahoma, excuse me. And then was just very different last year with the charters. And I think he'll get back to that. So um, those two, I'm, I'm excited to see. I think that's, that's a fun, good pair again. It's got to be healthy, man. It's got to be yeah. healthy. And, and I will say, I'll give you a quick little nugget here. When we talked to Drew Tranquil, um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was he had mentioned that he and the linebacking core, uh, they're going to try, they've been watching a lot of film of the uh, 49ers defense where they're trying to get more tackles, take the ball away, like be just be disruptive. Mm-hmm. And then he mentioned that he had a chip on his shoulder because he knows kind of the rap that Brandon Staley has where he wants to get a whole bunch, you know, five DBs and everything. And he's like, I don't want just one linebacker on the field and have him throw two of us back on the sidelines. Like, the, yeah. we, we want to show out why we're here. And mm-hmm. so I would – it's going to be really fun to see, like, what the combination is going to look like. But more often than not, if there are two linebackers on the field, it's going to be those two. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So that's a good that's a good nugget that he has there. Uh, you guys, they're getting killer interviews on Chargers and Ladies, you Chargers fans. You got you to check that out. So um, – all right, for the Rams, we'll stick to on the field here. We'll maybe we'll do on the field, and then we'll end with we'll do a, a random pairing. We can end with that for the show to keep it fun. Um, so for the Rams, and again, you know, a lot of good pairings, a lot of on defense things kind of shifting around a lot. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, I think still we'll see a lot of the same pairings and whatnot. So I'm going to go with uh, again an obvious one, but. Matthew Stafford, and it's got to be one of the receivers because I want to see how he really um, manipulates the offense and also brings in this receiver and brings him back to glory. And I'm going to go with Deshaun Jackson. I know a lot of fans were surprised 
when they signed him to the one year deal, obviously the injury history. I don't think he needs to be, but I, okay, let me say this in order for Deshaun Jackson to be successful and stay healthy. He needs to be a 15 play guy a game. He doesn't need to be, he, which he's going to do with the Rams. He's wide receiver four, maybe five even now with Tutu Atwell here. But if he has 15 snaps and one or two of those goes for a deep bomb a game, it's going to look like the greatest signing ever. And it's not like the greatest pairing ever of Matthew Stafford and Deshaun Jackson as he can ride off into the sunset or get a new career or a new uh, contract here in LA if he has a great year here. And uh, we'll just be able to see that deep ball from Stafford that we didn't see the last few years with Jared Goff. So um, that to me is a perfect pairing just because of what skill sets they both have, how often they can use them because they're not required to. It's not like they need to do it so many times a game. They can say, hey, Deshaun, you're running, you're running 10 plays today. Go get one 60-yarder. Cool. Matt, make it happen. And that and that's a successful day. One catch, 60 yards, a touchdown, that's a win. I mean, that was Jalen Guyton and uh, Tyron Johnson's career last year for the Chargers. <laughs> Averaging like 25 yards a catch. It was great. Yeah, 161. That was their stat line every game, and it was beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> so um, do you – I'll put you on the spot. Do you, do you have one for the Rams? You don't have to. So you, don't, you don't fall in the um, – I – I do. So I honestly, one of the things that I, I really like, and I was actually talking to a buddy of mine who's a huge Rams fan is probably one of my favorite picks that you guys had last year was Cam Akers. Yeah. And seeing him with Daryl Henderson, I, I really, really want to see that. I thought Cam, I thought Cam Akers started off a little slow last year, Mm -hmm. but I was not hopping off that train. Like I was full board that ship. And like towards the end of the season, I'm like, that's your guy. Like that's your bell cow. So I think your running back stable is set. I think Cam Akers is going to be your workhorse. I think he can kind of do it all. But him and Henderson, I think that's a good pairing to have. I mean, you could obviously, you could talk about, you know, the obvious, you could talk about, you know, Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald, like, of course. Yeah, but, of course. Um, I kind of, I think it's going to be important for you guys to have balance on that offense. Like you have mm-hmm. such good talent at wide receiver. And Matthew Stafford obviously is an increase and an upgrade over what you had before Goff. But I think you're they're gonna have teams are gonna have to keep you honest. And I think it's gonna have to be those two running backs specifically. Tutu Atwell will help because I think he's kind of one of those flex offensive weapon types. But um yeah, I'm kind of excited for Cam Akers. I love I love that you say that. And uh it's it's a beautiful pairing, especially again, they were they were they obviously very different positions, but they were kind of similar to like Nas and, and Derwin in the fact they just, they weren't on the field together. Like Cam Akers got banged up early in the season. So then Daryl Henderson had to be kind of the lead back, which isn't really his role. I think yeah. he's more of the slasher change of pace. And then once Cam Akers came back, then Daryl Henderson got banged up. So if we can see them both and if they can both get, you know, I think Cam Akers will be that 15 to 18 touches a game guy. And Daryl Henderson can be that like 12 to 13, which is a, you know, puts you over that 30 carry tr- threshold, which I think is so important for this Rams team. And I love that you mentioned they need to be balanced because we saw all of Matthew Stafford career. He had what, like three 100 yard rushers his entire career. Yeah. And all of a sudden, if he can be with the Rams and have one every game, that's just going to make him so much better. And it's going to make this offense so much better. And it's going to make it click and run. And, and so, yeah, that pairing. Yeah. It's a beautiful ice cream and Garrison brothers. There we go. Cherry on top. Let's go. Now, Thank looking you. at the at both teams, now you can go a bunch of dire- different directions, and we'll go random. Like, you, and you could talk about like who you'd want to go to a barbecue with. You could talk about again someone maybe on the field, maybe best dressed. Who, who name it? You mm-hmm. name it. So we, we've talked to a few Chargers players, and we've talked to some of the the free agents. We've talked to some of the folks that we've gotten through the draft. Um, you know, I, I. I want to go with like the perfect pairing of just like the who the Chargers needed most as a mm-hmm. one two combo in this draft. And they got with like a Slater and Asante Samuel Jr. Because both of those were like yeah. literally perfect picks. And all Chargers fans, like both guys, were the ones that Chargers fans were dreaming of as their one two pair for round one, round two. Like, I was oh, listening yeah. to Chargers Twitter for weeks 
And that's all they were talking about was Asante Samuel, 47, but no way Slater's falling to 13. Like, that was it. And honestly, people were also saying there was no way Asante was going to fall to 47. So on the field or just in the draft room, I feel like it's got to be them. Um, Man, Brian Belaga and Corey Lindsley, like, put them together with a Rashawn Slater. I mean, God, that's I know it's a trio, but but <laughs> you can be a trio or a quartet if you want. Yeah, um, but I gotta say, so perfect pairing. If there is a perfect pairing that I would love to, like, just play any sport that's not football. Okay, I like this. I don't know if it would be Derwin James because I feel like he would be lethal and competitive and would just blow the doors off me and literally everything. Yeah. Um, yeah and my, I like, I have it a little bit. And most likely everybody probably would. But yeah. I feel like Nazir Adderley would be hilarious to play with and fun, as would Keenan Allen. I've seen Keenan Allen on the golf mm. course. I have mm. heard he's a great basketball player. I've yeah. seen him on the sticks a few times. And Nazir Adderley just seems like he... He'll play anything. He's talked about how he's like the he's the king of the hill when it comes to basketball in their locker room. So yeah. off the off the field, I think I would love to just play a pickup game of I don't know, doesn't matter, pickleball. You pick a sport, those two guys I think I'm picking. Okay. I like that. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. And yeah, pickleball or golf, like you said. Uh oh, dude, golf with those three, we I mean, I would surely oh. be the worst for sure. Hey, you never you never know. Golf's a completely different game. Uh, but now, now you gotta be now you gotta be thinking because Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen, I would love to pl- go on the links with. Okay, so let's, let's just do that. Golf, those would be your two pick. Those would be my two by far. Justin Herbert is ridiculously good. Yeah, and Keenan Allen's got a smooth stroke, man. Yeah, yeah, no, he does. Yeah, if I was so if, okay, if I was golfing with the Rams, I'd probably go Cooper. <laughs> it would have been, been Jared Goff, but <laughs> yeah. I know he had the little, uh, like the thing in his backyard or whatever, right? Yep. Um, I'd probably go Cooper Cup and Johnny Hecker would be my golf. Okay, my golf pairing. And I'm how sorry. would you how would you fare with them? Oh, I'm sure they. Well, I I don't know. I'm not saying I'm a good golfer, but I don't know. I don't want to just <laughs> assume they're going to smoke me because golf's such a different game. Like any other athletic uh, competition. Any athlete, any football player would probably smoke me, but golf is a very different game than maybe. It's, it leaves the playing field a bit. Because, like, Aaron Donald is the the biggest freak athlete, like, we've ever seen. Like, the most athletic specimen, but he could be terrible at golf. I don't know. Maybe he's great. I don't know. But he could be awful. Honestly, that needs to be, like, another, like, ESPN. I forget the version of ESPN that's, like, the one for, like, the crazy random sports. But, the they, need to get, but they need to get, like, <laughs> Aaron Donald playing, like, cricket. Or like Michael yeah. Jordan trying to play, I don't know, pick a sport that's like soda him hockey. Yeah. Or like Jordan Spieth trying to play baseball. Yeah. Just like see all these like tremendous athletes who are How the best in like the transfer world. Over. Yeah. And just absolutely horrendous at something else. Like imagine yeah. Aaron Donald playing golf. Like I can't imagine he's good. I mean, maybe he's, he is. He's, he's good at everything else. Yeah. Maybe he is though. Who knows? So I don't know. Um, okay, outside of the golf course, I'm gonna go with this pairing. I'm going to go, I, I, you know, now that the summer's here, the heat's on. I I love I love all music, any music I like, but I, I'm kind of seasonal what I listen to most. And so when it's summertime, I love country music. Something about country music in the, the summer. Brian. Yeah, all of it. It's just, it just flows good. You know, windows down, pop, you know, pop the top. It's good stuff at the beach. Um, so if I'm going with a pairing of who's going with me to a country concert, I'm going, obviously, Andrew Whitworth. Got to be, got to be big wit. It's <laughs> coming with me, and then I'm I, I wanted I want to pair someone on defense, and I I've, I'm kind of adding together a few of the guys, and I'm trying to think like who would pair best with wit because I, I want to see. I was trying to look when I was at his open practice, kind of who was he rapping with, if you will, or who was he jawing with, going back and forth, and. You know, I, Aaron Donald obviously is a, is a good choice. I think he would look great in a cowboy hat. Could put some good boots on. Look great. You certainly, ha- you certainly have your security detail with Whitworth and Donald. <laughs> I'd be pretty set. I could probably talk as much shit as I want to anybody, and I my back would be you know covered. I think. Um, but yeah, I'm like, do I want Aaron Donald? I mean, of course I want Aaron Donald. But is that a good pair? Yeah, I think that's a good pair. Aaron Donald, Andrew Whitworth, country concert. 
we're hanging out, having a good time. I just picture Aaron Donald and Andrew with both in overalls with, you know, cowboy boots, straw hat, looking great. And I'm there with just wearing my like Bass Pro Shops hat with like some some vans on. Having a good there time. There you go. I will say, and if I was looking to go on like um I don't know, a runway or try to, you know, look fashion, look fly when I'm out there in the streets, I think I'd have to go Chris Harris. Oh yeah. So fresh. And then, uh, he, according to Chris Harris, Nazir Adderley is the best dressed player on the team. Really? Okay. So I feel like I have to go those two. But man, if I want someone to make my make me laugh my ass off, apparently it's Chris Rumpf. We had I him know. on the show, and he is hilarious. <laughs> I believe that? Yeah, that's awesome. Such Another a cool kid, pick. though, man. So grounded. He's awesome. Another great pick. Yeah. No, I've heard that. Obviously, watch your show. And he just seemed hilarious, and I've heard that from other people too. The, the guy's just a riot. So did you hear, did you hear him calling out um, calling out Chad Ochocinco on FIFA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I was I was dying. So great. Keenan Allen seems like he'd be hilarious too. Yes, yes. Yeah. I just want to get I just want to get Keenan Allen and do like some karaoke with him one day. Yeah. Who I'm trying to think on the Rams. See, I'm trying to think back to Hard Knocks. Who really seems like. Because Robert, I love Robert Woods. He's honestly, one of my favorite players in the NFL. Robert Woods is very just kind of you know controlled, reserved. I think I'm sure he has like a humorous side. Cooper Cup, same thing, kind of controlled, reserved. Running back room that you mentioned seems like that. And there's really no one on the offense. It seems like just a, a clown. I guess on defense, maybe maybe one of the safeties. I mean, I don't know. There's so, they don't really have a guy that stands other than Jalen Ramsey. Just talks a lot of ish. That's a good point, Taylor Rapp. That, Maybe yeah, really. How about your putter? I mean, Hecker, yeah. <laughs> He's a heckler, I guess. But <laughs> so. Honestly, I, I would love to go. I'll just blend the two teams. Perfect pairing. Go have a beer with Brandon Staley and Sean McVay. There like, go. that would be such a cool just, That's a perfect just talk football. Be. Yeah. Oh, man. I can't. I, it's crazy to think they were both on the same staff. I mean, obviously, we still got to see this the actual season play out. Cause I know we're hyped about Brandon Staley, but it's crazy that they were on the same staff. And now like, you know how much in one, in one happy hour, like how much I just want to put my phone on record, ask them in advance. Yeah. And then just like, shut up, let, let them, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. And just ask questions. Cause there's so much knowledge and just like perspective. That's not only been around for a while from them, that they've learned from other people, but also that they are bringing both yeah. like from their own talent they've had on the teams as well as just their own history. It's that's a lot of expertise at yeah. one happy hour for sure. It, and it, none it, of it comes from me. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's okay. We'll just be there to, to clink glasses kind of thing. <laughs> yes. And, sir. and we'll probably be the ones picking up the rounds. Definitely. Like us do. We're like, Oh, I'll get the round. Even though, you know, we make a fraction of what they make. That's what we do. So that's very true. Uh, Dan Wolkenstein, my man. Dude, thanks for jumping on with me. Uh, always great talking to you. Um, yeah, thanks you for taking well. the time and, and talking some uh, Chargers Rams. Of course. Can't wait to talk more L.A. football as we get going. There's so much that we can get into. I know this next month is going to be kind of dark when it comes to like content from the teams, but that's why Ryan, myself, Chargers Unleash, LAFB, we all got you covered. Uh, this has been a pleasure, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me on and inviting me. This has been super fun. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you're going to be on a lot. We're doing a lot more live shows, too, that we're going to try to get everyone involved with at uh, the LA Football Network. And I didn't even say it, but I love the shirt you're rocking. What is that? Tommy Bahama? or It is, actually. It's bringing it's me like back to my there on the other line. Yes, sir. You look great. So, um, well, obviously, Chargers Unleashed is your podcast. Let the good people know where everyone can find you, your show, your co-host, all that good stuff. You got it. Yeah, so you can find us at Chargers at LAC underscore Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, Charges Unleashed on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can also subscribe on YouTube. It's where we have all of our special guests and uh, player interviews. We've talked to all kinds of folks, so check it out there. Uh, you can find myself at Chargers Homer on Twitter. My co-host, Jake Hefner, is fantastic. You can find him on Twitter at Jake T. Hefner. We're just two guys having fun talking football and uh, trying to bring you guys authentic and realistic and also hopefully entertaining Chargers content. Yeah. You guys are crushing it. I mean, the, the interviews you guys are getting, it's awesome. And I'm, you know, honored that you're, you know, on this network and, you know, we've become friends and hung out and, um, oh, yeah, man. Stuff. so, 
appreciate you as always keep up the good work uh excited to see what you guys keep doing excited to see what we all keep doing and uh thank you all for tuning in to the la football podcast you can find me at ryan dyrid lafb anywhere you listen to podcasts we are also on youtube at lafb network on the social channels at lafb network also twitter instagram facebook all that good stuff hope everyone out there has a fantastic week 